you know, just to clean up the last game, um, you know, our players really played hard in the last game. I was really pleased with the intensity that they played with. Um, we obviously have some areas that uh, we nail, we still need to be more consistent in our execution and ability to finish. Um, so, you know, we have a, a lot of work to do. Uh, we have a lot to prove as a football team. You know, sometimes what gets you here doesn't really get you there, which is where you want to go. So uh, we got to focus on being a little more competent, a little more attention to detail, uh, do the little things right um, so that we can continue to grow and improve. Uh, and I think that's going to be critical for us, especially getting back into SEC play against a very good team, you know, this week. So, um, you know, players of the week, I think you already got these, but DJ Fluker and Eddie Lacey did a really good job. Robert Lester and CJ Mosley and Kate Foster, D. Hart and Vinny Sinceri on special teams. Um, the only injured guy we have is uh, Brandon Ivory, uh, who is going to be day to day, won't practice today. Um, you know, and I, I can't tell you, it's probably going to be questionable, you know, for this week. Um, you, you know, Ole Miss is really, you know, a much, much, much improved, you know, team. Uh, I think the offensive numbers that they've been able to put up against um, everyone that they've played uh, have been very, very impressive. Uh, they're no huddle style, you know, a little bit about like what Auburn used to be when Gus Malzahn was there, uh, just to give, you know, our folks something to sort of relate it to. Um, they, um, they're playing hard. They're playing with a lot of spirit. They've got some really good skilled players. Bo Wallace has done a good job for him at quarterback. Barry Bernetti comes in sometimes, two quarterback system, no huddle fast. Um, really run the ball effectively with all the zone read options, quarterback runs, uh, have some good skill guys that can make plays in the passing game. Um, their defense is very quick and athletic, um, move around a lot, um, and you know create problems sometimes in their ability to to run and affect the edges in the passing game. So um, forced a bunch of turnovers last week. So this is a team that's a completely different team. I think Hugh Freeze has done a really, really good job and obviously going to be important for us getting back into SEC play and should be a great atmosphere for us in Bryant-Denny Stadium Saturday night. Coach, C.J. Mosley has been one of the staff's players of the week every week since the season began. Can you just talk about the way he's consistently graded since the start of the year? Well, you know, C.J. does a really good job. He's um, very athletic, fast, uh, very instinctive, uh, and is really a playmaker, you know, type of guy as well. Uh, he's learned since he's been here to fit the runs a little bit better and uh, does a good job in that regard. He's gotten a little bigger and a little stronger. Uh, he's always been a really good athlete and a space player. So with all the spread out formations that, you know, we've played against to this point, you know, he's had a lot of opportunities to make plays, and he's made a lot of plays. Coach, you've had kind of the luxury of playing a lot of different guys, a lot of young guys. Um, I think fairly significant minutes. How, how big a luxury is that, a benefit is that potentially down the line? Well, you know, I, I do think that uh, even though they scored on the last drive, you know, a lot of the guys that got an opportunity to play this week, you know, learned a lot about what happened when they played at Arkansas. So that really helped them improve. I think it improved their preparation. I, th I think it improved their sort of, you know, sense of urgency about getting ready to play and that they may have an opportunity and need to be prepared. Um, so I think there was improvement made and I think that's a good thing. I think it helps the depth of our team. And on the other side of that, you know, you could say, well, we haven't had to play 60 minutes in a game yet with the guys that are going to have to play, and we're going to play against a team that's going to try to run 80 plays on offense. You know, that's their goal. So uh, more players are going to have to contribute, and the players that play are going to have to be able to sustain their performance for longer in the game. Yep. 
on, on both sides of the ball, it just seems like there's a lot of balance statistically, not a lot of individual guys standing out among SEC leaders and things like that. Does that kind of speak to the balance of this team, or is it just because just so many players have been able to get, in, get into the game so far? Well, you know, we, we, we probably have a team that doesn't have as many maybe defined stars as what we've had in the past. Um, and, of course, you all define them, so that's not my doing. But um, and, and I think that we have a lot of guys that have had a lot of opportunity to play, uh, which, you know, is a good thing. And some of those guys have contributed and because of their contributions. I think that they've had an opportunity to improve and uh, hopefully we'll continue to have a lot of guys that can make contributions on both sides of the ball. So, um, you know, I think that's probably a good thing. Coach, Ari Kwanjo got, you know, put, played a pretty good bit um, Saturday. Can you just talk about his toughness just to get back into the field and how he's doing as well? Well, he's a pretty relentless guy. I mean, he re worked really, really hard. I mean, he had two, you know, pretty significant, you know, type surgeries that uh, are long time rehabs uh, that he worked very, very hard at. Uh, we weren't even sure that he would be able to get back and be able to play this season. And um, he was ready in the summer and uh, has has really done a nice job and uh, has, you know, developed into a nice, you know, backup player for us for right now, which adds depth to the offensive line. So we're really pl pleased with, with him. But I think it's it speaks to his character and work ethic and, and attitude that has got him back to being able to do that. Hey, Coach, uh, through four games, you guys haven't trailed in a game yet. As a coach, is that something that you worry about, that you think about, that if the team ever gets down down the road when they face more adversity, that it might not be something that they know how to deal with? Or does that not even cross your mind? Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, we're constantly trying to, you know, teach our players that you play the next play. You, you're not worried about the scoreboard. You're not worried about you know, the circumstance in the game, that's an external factor. You need to focus on what you need to do to execute um, the very next play, whether you're heading the game, behind in the game, that really doesn't matter. So that's something that we're constantly trying to uh, instill in our players from a competitive standpoint. Um, if they've never been in a situation, I guess you don't know for sure how they're going to respond. Uh, but I think it's about poise and confidence and just continuing to play in the game and um, having confidence that if you continue to do the right things and execute and pay attention to detail and play together as a team, you're going to have a chance to, you know, come back and be able to do the things you need to do to be successful. Excuse me. You mentioned the option earlier. Um, was there much of a priority in in getting the de defense up to speed on that during the offseason? Well, we've already played against it, you know, the Michigan game and. Um, you know, so we, we have put a priority on it. Um, there are some similarities to some of the things that we played against in the past, but, you know, it's anytime we play anybody that does things different than what we do, we spend time working on it. Uh, so it's not going to be all new to the players, you know, when we play against it. And um, this is, you know, one of those things that fits into that category. I'll probably get it for this question, but you are headed into the fifth game. Um, any freshmen who are who are haven't played, who are close to playing, and are you at, at the point where you start looking at whether to play them, not play them, in terms of that year of eligibility? Well, I, I think the the situation we've played a lot of freshmen, um, and in some cases those guys have developed nicely, and I think they're going to contribute to our team, you know, significantly down the road. Uh, in other cases, you know, you'd like to see guys progress more rapidly, um, and but we're going to continue to work with them and, and play the guys that we've played. I think if a guy hasn't played to this point, we probably don't really plan to play him, um, but we may not have the luxury to do that. Uh, I think that we continue to try to develop all the players that are freshmen and if we get injuries or, you know, have an issue or a problem depth-wise at a, at a position, 
Uh, we may have to, to play someone else who uh, we thought maybe we wouldn't need to play. And I think, again, you know, these decisions are, try are trying to – we're trying to make these decisions based on the fact, is a guy going to get to play enough to help him develop as a player um, relative to losing the year of eligibility for playing him just a little bit? And that, that's really, you know, what we're trying to do. But um, we don't have any plans to play anyone to this point who has not played. But that doesn't mean that that can't happen or won't happen. All, we got, All right, thank you.